truck, all you need to do is raise your hand. And I will also raise my hand. And together, we can wave goodbye to the item. <laughs> the first stop on our safari is the Little Inturi Forest. On your right-hand side, there is an okapi over there. Eating some branches off that tree. Okapis are relatives of the giraffe. They have very similar faces to giraffes. They also have very long tongues like a giraffe has. Their tongue is about a foot and a half long. They use that tongue to pull the leaves off of branches. They were believed to be mythical creatures for a large amount of time. They actually were only officially discovered in the year 1901. So we've only known that Okapis existed for a little over 100 years. There's a black rhino up ahead of us, walking along on the other side of this river. There's also one there on your left flying down. Black rhinos weigh about 3,000 pounds. Now there's actually fewer than 5,000 black rhinos left on Earth. They're very endangered. They actually do not have natural predators. They're endangered because of humans. Because humans are poaching them or illegally hunting them for their horns. Crossing the road in front of us is a greater kudu. That's a female greater kudu. You can tell because she does not have any horns. Only male greater kudus have horns. There's another one falling soon. Behind those greater kudu, you can see some orangey antelope. Those are bongos. They're going to be on the left hand side. They're nicknamed the ghosts of the forest. Because they're normally very shy and reclusive. The horns of the bongo tilt backwards. That keeps them from getting tangled up in brush and vines as the bongos are walking through the forest. Is this anyone's first ever safari here in Rave? Mine, but I didn't lose anything. Oh, I see quite a few hands. Welcome to Karabuni. For those of you who've been with us before, welcome back. Now, since the animals on the reserve are free roaming, the safari is different every time. You'll never have exactly the same safari twice. On your right hand side, there's a hippopotamus in that river. It's right by the island, down in the water. The hippos spend a lot of their time submerged in water. However, hippos can't swim. Their legs are too short. So instead, they just walk along the bottom of the water. And if the water's a little deeper, they'll just push themselves off the bottom to rise up to the top, get a breath, and then sink back down. Here on the left, these white birds are pink-backed pelicans. There's quite a few in the river as well. Their backs turning darker shaded pink during mating season. And they can have wingspans of up to seven to nine feet long. The hippos can hold their breath for up to eight minutes at a time. And they're actually the most dangerous animals in Africa. That's because the hippopotamus is very territorial and it has very long teeth. tree. It also has the nickname the Upside Down Tree. It can live to be over 1,000 years old. And right now we're entering into the home of the Baobab tree, which is also the most famous part of Africa. It is the savanna. The savanna goes on for miles and miles. It is home to a lot of different kinds of animals. If you look as we come down this hill, you can see some of these animals in the distance, like those Ancoli cattle way out there. 
You can especially see those horns on the Ankuli cattle. No, we'll be able to get a lot closer to these animals as we continue driving on through the savannah. On your left hand side there are some spotted hyenas over there. Spotted hyenas are led by an alpha female. In fact, in a clan of hyenas, all of the females outrank all of the males. And coming up on the left there is a sable antelope. Oh, there's two sable antelopes. Three, four, multiple sable antelopes there on your left hand side. See, they have those curved horns. Those horns help protect them from a predator attack from behind. So they curve backwards. And these mounds all around the savanna, the orangey brown ones, they are termite mounds. Termite mounds are made of saliva dung and mud. They can get to be as hard as concrete. On the inside, those mounds look porous. That means they got a lot of tunnels and chambers inside of them. that we saw earlier, they're on our right hand side. You can get a good look at how long those horns are. They're about four feet long. And the Ankuli cattle's blood actually gets pumped through those horns. So when the blood is in the horn, it cools down, and then it enters the body and cools the body down. So their horns are used for ventilation. And they are hollow on the inside. So they're very lightweight. They are the only domesticated animals you'll find here on the reserve. Behind those Ancoli cattle, there is some white bearded wildebeest up on the hill by that tall grass. Wildebeest are constantly migrating across Africa searching for fresh grass to eat. If they eat all the grass in an area, they will leave, go search for more grass. As they leave, they trample the ground that fertilizes the ground so the grass can grow back. Then they come back and they eat that grass. Here's some giraffe up ahead of us. It's going to be on your left hand side. Giraffe are about 18 to 20 feet tall. In their long necks, they only have seven vertebrae or seven bones. That is the same amount of vertebrae that humans have in our necks. Now, when giraffe are born, they tend to be born at a height of about six feet tall. And they can learn to walk within one hour of being born. It's <laughs> quiet. A group of giraffe is called a tower. And the Swahili word for giraffe is twiga. And behind that giraffe on your left are some Patterson's eland, the largest of all antelope. You'll see the big one is wearing a nice flower crown right now. So he put on his, his best looks for us today. Patterson's eland are the largest of all antelope, like I said. They can jump seven to eight feet high in the air from a standstill. That's awesome. There's one final giraffe on your right hand side as well. Find the giraffe. Okay, that giraffe is On your left hand side, there is a mandrel back there. He's back behind the trees. Oh, he's walking out. 
Mandrills are the largest members of the monkey family. They can weigh up to 100 pounds. They have pouches in their cheeks. They'll use those pouches to store snacks for later. It looks like it's moving back behind those trees. And he has disappeared behind the trees. Back off. <laughs> Unfortunately, I cannot. <laughs> now, recently a scientist made a discovery about elephants. They discovered that elephants have a fear of bees. For a long time, there were issues between farmers in Kenya and elephants because the elephants would always eat the crops of the farmers and trample them, make them unusable, which made the farmers very upset. But when scientists made this discovery about the elephants' fear of bees, the farmers started putting beehives around their crops. And that was a humane way of keeping elephants away. So the crops were not damaged, and the farmers were able to use them, and the elephants did not get harmed in any way. And the elephants and the farmers were able to live together in harmony. Right now we're moving through red clay pits. There on your right hand side are some markings made by elephant tusks. These elephants eat red clay. It's got a lot of minerals inside of it. Every year elephants go on a migration across Africa. They go looking for watering holes. They got kind of a GPS in their brains. They always remember where the watering holes are located. So if they should get to a watering hole and find that there's no water left, that it has dried out, it is not much of an issue because they'll remember the locations of other watering holes in the area that they can visit instead. There's an elephant on your left-hand side. That elephant just started flapping its ears a little bit. Oh, and there's a rainbow behind that elephant as well. The elephant is the end of the rainbow. Now, elephants will flap their ears to cool themselves down. They use their ears as giant fans. The Swahili word for elephant is tembo. Here is another baobab tree on your left hand side. In its thick trunk, the baobab tree can store two to three thousand gallons of water. Which is why it also has the nickname, the Tree of Life. There are some more elephants on the left. There's also some flamingos up here. The grayish white birds are baby flamingos that are transitioning into pink. Flamingos that get their pink color from their diet of brine shrimp. And a group of flamingo is called a flamboyance. <laughs> and there's some more elephant back behind that flamboyance of flamingo. There's a baby elephant back there as well. You can't see it very well, but you can just barely see it between the adults. Elephant pregnancies last about 22 months, nearly two years. Up ahead, there is a bantabak on the left-hand side. Oh, and there's another one up there as well. Bantabak used to be very, very endangered. Actually, at one point, there were only 20 of them left on Earth. So, a few years ago, you'd be looking at 10% of all the Bantabak in the world. Thankfully, their numbers have been able to increase, largely due to the efforts of wildlife reserves like this one. Now, the Bantabak did go extinct in the wild, but they can be found on reserves around the world and efforts are being made to reintroduce them into the wild. That is why it's very important that we support conservation organizations. These are organizations that make reserves like this possible. Without these organizations, animals like the Bantabak would no longer exist.
If you look on your left, up that hill, there are two cheetahs, way back where it's brown. They're both lying down looking at us, but they're way, way back there. Wow. Cheetahs are the fastest land animals on Earth. They can run at speeds of up to 60 miles per hour. They can actually go from zero to 60 in three seconds. Wow. And they are the smallest of all the big cats. This large group of rocks here on the left, it's called a kopi. There's a lion on top of that kopi. Lions get up on top of the kopi to get a better view of their prey. So cute. Lions rest for about 18 to 20 hours a day. Oh, there's some lionesses. A group of lions is called a pride. And the Swahili word for lion is Simba. When a lion roars at full volume, that roar can be heard up to five miles away. some warthogs with a few baby warthogs on your left hand side. They're climbing up on top of those rocks. Warthogs are burrowing creatures. They dig their burrows with their tusks and their front hooves. They also use their tusks as self-defense so the, ba the warthogs will walk into their burrows backwards so their tusks always face out. On your right, way over there, there's some white rhinos. White rhinos weigh about four to 5,000 pounds. And up close are a few ostriches. <laughs> ostriches are the largest birds on Earth. They're so large, they're too heavy to fly. But they can run at speeds of up to 40 miles per hour. And those eggs are ostrich eggs. They're the largest eggs on Earth. They're so strong that a grown man could stand on them and they would not break. Right on top of this hill, there is a scimitar horned oryx. It gets its name because it's got those long curved horns that look kind of like a scimitar sword. <laughs> the scimitar horned oryx can go up to nine months without drinking water. That's because they get a lot of their hydration from the plants that they eat. They can also have body temperatures of up to 115 degrees before they start to sweat. And up here on the right, the white birds are yellow-billed storks. They are carnivorous birds. They eat just about anything smaller than them. They'll even eat other birds. They are known to trail behind the hippos and crocodiles in the river, eating whatever these hippos and crocodiles happen to kick up as they walk through the mud. We are nearing the end of our safari. Does anyone have a favorite animal that we got to see today? Giraffe. The giraffe. There are a lot of incredible animals found here on the reserve and in the wilds of Africa. And a lot of these animals need our help. They are endangered. If you want to help protect these animals, one of the easiest things you can do is recycle. You can recycle paper, plastic, even electronics. Recycling helps prevent deforestation, helps protect your natural habitats. You can also make a donation 
to the Disney Conservation Fund. You can do that at any store in Animal Kingdom. And it, Disney will match your donations. They'll donate the same amount of money that you do. And all that money will be used to help protect animals around the world. And you'll get a nice little button that's proof that you donated. If you're looking to see more animals while you're here in Animal Kingdom, I suggest you check out the Gorilla Falls Exploration Trail. It is a walking trail located right outside the safari. You'll be able to see gorillas, meerkats, naked mole rats.